Guys, this is Matt Donald from the future, from the year 2070. I'm 79 years old. I know I don't sound it, but look, healthcare got really, really great in the future. But you know what didn't get great? Everything else. A nuclear war. Countries hate each other even more than they do now. Wealth inequality is up the wazoo. People are starving. Global warming has become global. Holy crap, it's really hot, Ing. Ah, uh, it's terrible. But the consensus is that it's the way it is now, because in this version of the future, not enough people subscribe to my Patreon account at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. Well, I've come back to try and fix that future from ever happening again, so if you like your future to be, you know, pretty good, like not great, but better than this, then subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. There you can find bonus content for both my shows, The Ritwit and Paleobites. For the Paleobites bonus content, we discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, and this month we're talking about Paraworld, a really obscure but really fun real-time strategy game from back in the day that has dinosaurs and people riding dinosaurs and robots and pirates and samurai and guns. It's been described as Dinotopia meets Warcraft, and that's quite an apt description, I'd say. Link is in the description for you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a lovely day. Sign up to the Patreon. Do it for the future! Now I gotta go back, before the time police catch me! Roar! Growl! Snarl! Bellow! Roar. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast that's a real dino snore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Matthew Dahl, and each week I'm a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by probably the fan favorite of the show, at least if my if my mom is any indication. <laughs> uh, please welcome Laura Owsley. How are Hello, you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, that is actually my target demographic, is that I do really well with like middle-aged adults. Yeah. Oh, uh. oh I'm sure she'd be flattered that you say she's middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> I know much better than to say anything else. Come on now. And mom does listen to this podcast, so love you, mom. Hi, Matt's mom. <laughs> we have not met. <laughs> oh, she's great. She loves your voice. So Aww. she thinks you you have a great dynamic on this show. So so anyways. Uh, you really can't do this to me right before we start recording no, or like gonna... in the early episodes. Yeah. Like this my ego will be too big for this. Well one. then also you'll be the pressure will be on. You'll be like, I've gotta be funny. I've gotta make jokes. Oh, I'm always funny. Oh, that's no, true. I... It's just naturally <laughs> true. Yeah, it's, I guess right, that's true. Right, right. Come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As opposed to, you know, me, who are like, I have to like 100 episodes in now, and I'm like, how can I do a Welcome to Paleo Bites, the self-deprecating joke that's about themed around dinosaurs? How do I come up with a 100 of these? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty proud of you so far. You've done a lot of these. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, I've got a whole uh, library of Welcome to Paleo Bites podcast where blank and like it's like uh, i think i have another 50 more <laughs> like that's honestly so impressive to me like yeah like again how many self-deprecating jokes theme around dinosaurs can we have here i feel like that should be like you should share this as a google sheet uh for the rest of the world and just let other people like plug in their own stuff right Ooh, ooh, smart hey. and i'll be like this one is submitted by patreon <laughs> like, exactly number, whatever like uh, fan interaction. Yeah, I would read you some of these, but one, I don't want to spoil them for future episodes. But two, I want you to hear them, you know, off the cuff when I say them. If oh yeah, and it's always fun for me to see where you're gonna start the episode at. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Speaking of starting the episode at, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of our better transitions. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, I guess dinosaur related question. That's usually how we start our episodes at. Uh, Okay. Oh, God, I had a really good one that I remembered I was going to say. I was like, what was that? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Ah, I remembered. I was like, this would be perfect to ask Laura. I do that probably once a week. They'll like, be in the shower or something. I'm like, I thought of a great thing to say. I, I, I follow the Twitter profile, Shower Thoughts. So good. Yeah. Yeah, you follow them too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Man. 
Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> if you could, uh, if a dinosaur were to spontaneously come to mind in a shower for you, if you were to, like, what what is the dinosaur most likely for you to have a shower thought about? Do you think? So this is not an after dark question. Mm. Just to be clear. I mean, uh, I mean, look, you do you in the shower, but okay. Um, no. Uh, let's see. And I go. I know the likelihood of you thinking of any dinosaur in the shower is like slim to none. But out of those slim to none, what is the most likely? <laughs> okay. Then like. Let's, like, narrow it down to, like, what dinosaur would be, like, most akin to the yellow rubber duck I have in my shower? Uh, probably, uh, based on, you know, how evolution works and the right. definition of dinosaurs, the duck itself. <gasps> <laughs> like gasp. <laughs> La gasp. The way the I French forget. gasp. <laughs> it's like the baby cries in Spanish. <laughs> uh Okay, um, well, if you're talking okay. about actual prehistoric creatures, there was uh, Hesperornis, which is like a prehistoric... It's not a duck, but it kind of looks like a duck. Okay. It's huge. <laughs> I love that. Have you seen... There's a uh, very old stand-up bit uh, that went viral mm-hmm. a very long time ago. This is great content. Oh, was it the one about like you, all the rubber ducks? Yes. Yes. And it's he like... like tortures his poor roommates with getting like hundreds of rubber ducks until he gets one that takes up the entire... Yeah, because they're like, okay, you can only have one rubber duck. Like, oh, well, one rubber duck, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this giant one. <laughs> yeah. I think about that probably twice a week. That's, because It's pretty funny. Right? And my roommate and I have a pretty good relationship. But yeah. at the same time, my like more petty side of me, whenever <laughs> he says something, I'm like... I'd really love to take this like to the max to really annoy you right now, I Jesse. Just, like, if that <laughs> happened to me, I'd be I, I'd just be nervous to go to the bathroom because I'd be like, what I'm... duck mayhem is waiting for me in here? <laughs> this is fair. This is fair. <laughs> and you know. The more I think about it, the more I think that I don't have an excuse because there is like a half bath in my apartment. You don't have an excuse except for, you know, do you have money to buy all these ducks? Well, no, but I assume that like I could steal them or rent Uh, them or... You know, go look at garage sales. I'm assuming people are giving away their ducks. Now, granted, they'll all be different ducks, I assume. I think that's a good thing though, right? Well, the whole thing with that skit was that they're all the same duck, (laughs) just Mm. different sizes. (laughs) Oh, I guess there really isn't that much variety. They're usually all yellow. They're usually all kind of the same right? shape. And some of them have, like, hats and stuff. But, like, aside from that, like... Why are rubber ducks yellow? Have you ever seen a yellow duck? You know, I don't know if I have... That's a gosh diddly dang darn good question. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to swear less on Matt's podcast. Yeah, so swear away. Bring, oh, I guess it's true. It's right for my sake to... Stop the velociraptors from coming. <laughs> also, I've already used my, like, one great bit on the I can say whatever I want, and then a whole series of swear words followed by the word poop. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> that was great. That was f***ing great. <laughs> okay. It's my f***ing best content. Yeah, f- yeah. That's on there. There's all the edits there. Okay. There we go. All right. It's anyway. all a lot of Anyways, this season. Anyways, speaking of... Uh, Oh yeah, okay. Here, here's you know, ducks are kind of like flamingos. Yeah, they're like aquatic birds. They're 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 short legged, short neck flamingos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. aren't pink. They're no pink ducks. The, are there not? Are there? I don't. Know. I was just about to Google other yellow ducks. Now I have to add to the list. Well, oh, they're pink flamingos ducks. Flamingos are kind of like more white than pink, depending That's true. on their diet. That's true. I guess if those ducks did eat uh, the shrimp. They would turn pink. Also, I wondered if we eat the shrimp, what would, would happen? We turn pink. Yeah, would our skin turn pink, or mm. would our hair turn pink? I'd assume our skin, because like if you eat too many like carrots, your skin can get a little yellow. Yeah, I've seen the Magic School Bus. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're I think uh, Ralphie or him. Arnold turns <laughs> orange or something. I forget. Like, thank you for immediately calling me out on like it's not like Laura read this in some research paper. She watched yeah. the Magic School Bus at age nine and took this yep. as her entire science. Yep, like nope. Education. That's how 90s kids got their science. Either Magic School Bus or Bill Nye the Science Guy. I didn't have a, like, regular science class until, like, ninth grade. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. Anyways, well, we're not talking about a flamingo. We're talking about a pterodactyl that's like a flamingo. Yeah. We're talking about pterodostro. Or, or southern wing. The ostro, like, Australia. Huh. Like, Are they native to Australia? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, get to where they're native <laughs> to, though. Okay. okay. So I did do a little bit. Uh, I looked up a picture of this particular uh, creature, uh, like, right before I came here. Oh, really? And it had it standing, like, next to a giraffe. And if this, like, measurement is accurate, it's 
freaking huge. Ooh, so what you're uh, talking about there is Quetzalcoatlus, <laughs> which uh. is not this, uh, but is another pterodactyl that is by far the biggest one. And yeah, like it, like that one like has a 40 foot wingspan but we think now it's kind of mostly terrestrial and yeah when it stood on the ground it was the height of a giraffe <laughs> oh that's terrifying yeah uh, this I'll... one's not that though this what type it is a oh god no words should start with the letter c and then t except for cthulhu this type is a chinat tin chasmated pterodactylid a group of pterosaurs known that for, the, right. for their distinct filter feeding teeth yeah thank you for verifying for me. <laughs> Okay, size. Okay, so Quetzalcoatlus had a 40-foot wingspan. This had an 8.2 feet slash 2.5 meter wingspan. Okay, I mean, that's still freaking yeah. huge. Yeah, like the great blue like... herons that I sometimes see here have a 6-foot wingspan, and sometimes I'm like, boy, they should be that big. They should <laughs> not be that big. Even, like, sometimes just going to the Denver Zoo, I'm looking at some of the, like, eagles and stuff, and I'm like, holy crap, that well, thing is huge. Well, and also, like, those eagles, like, they're usually just sitting there. Like, yeah. And, and they, that's, like, if we ever see them spread their wings, like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Birds are f crazy, man. Well, like... they're dinosaurs. They're modern dinosaurs. I know. Yep. Uh, diet omnivore for pterodostro. Okay. Uh, time early Cretaceous, 106 to 104 million years ago. Uh, location, uh, Argentina is where they're from, actually. Uh Oh, okay. So still the south. Still but... south, South America instead of the other side of the country. Have you ever... Yeah, the other side of the world. Yeah, the other side of the country. That's what I meant. Well, <laughs> you know, to be fair, it's, it's better for you to say the... It's, it's actually much more unifying to say the country of the world rather than, like, someone saying the country of Africa, which is a whole some... different... <laughs> which is a whole different... <laughs> yeah. Have you ever met somebody who's like, well, technically, I'm from the United States, but I like to consider myself a citizen of the world. And you're like, <laughs> okay, calm down, man. You've been to Paris, like, twice? Like, all right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a man of the world. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, uh, have you ever been to the Southern Hemisphere? Uh, I have not. Okay, it's there's, here's a crazy fact I mm. learned about the Southern Hemisphere, that all the Southern Hemisphere listeners, actually I have quite a few listeners in Australia, so they can verify this for me. All the right. moon is upside down. In the sky, in the southern hemisphere. Well, the moon is also a, a circle. So, like, if it's upside down, it's it's because it's a circle. <laughs> it's no, no, like you know, like the moon, like you know, there's like those distinctive like pla oh, uh, like I craters. See. Yes. Those, oh, okay. Like those distinctive, like the seas, what they call it, like. Or we are the ones who are upside down. I mean, you would be. That's why you're looking at it from the moon. <laughs> so, that's why it's upside down the sun is. You're looking at it from a different angle. And I'm just like, whoa, that blew my mind. <laughs> I have seen the thing that's like what we think of as a crescent moon looks mm -hmm. different in different parts of the globe. Yeah. Because obviously. Yeah, we're looking at it from different perspectives. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yep. Anyways, Teradus was described in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> I only exist on this podcast to derail Matt. Yes. Pop culture appearances, Jurassic World, the game, the mobile game we always talk about on the show because it has so many freaking creatures, uh, as well as an episode of Dinosaur Train and the documentary Sky Monsters. Huh. Yeah, this, except this isn't really a mon That thing with the giraffe size thing, that's a monster. This that's is a, I mean, this would still scare the crap out of me if I saw this today. Like yeah, I guess that's true. But, uh, but here's the thing about, like, uh, pterodactyls that like that let Land Before Time doesn't tell you. Mm. Uh, pterosaurs were not herbivores. Oh, they were not. Leaves are not very nutritious, and thus a diet of them exclusively does not provide enough energy for a flying animal. Huh. <laughs> Some of them might have been fruit eaters, living off the sugar like modern parrots and right. toucans, but they also probably balanced their diet with insects and other protein sources. I thought Petrie did, like, eat some bugs and stuff in the movie. I don't remember. I remember in the first movie, which is all I've seen recently, because I'm sure the sequels do not hold up. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but I remember he just ate leaves in that one. It was just focused on eating leaves. Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't know. I mean, mm. Matt and I have a whole Patreon episode yes. plug. Uh, oh, yes, about, about Land Before Time. And about one of these Land days, we'll probably do an episode on all the sequels, and I'll probably just lump them all into one episode because... <laughs> the mega episode of sequels. Yeah, because there's 14 of them. Uh, and I am not watching all of them for that. I'm just... <laughs> oh, I'm g we'll make it a marathon weekend. Ah. It'll be great. It'll be so fun. Uh, uh, bring on the drinks. <laughs> bring okay. on the drinks. 
No drinking games, though, just because that was 14 of them. Any amount of anything, we die. Yeah, no. <laughs> but like, I, it'd just be to get us through it. So. <laughs> we just need, like, a regular stream of alcohol. No, like, crazy, like, anytime this character says this catchphrase. Like, no, 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 no. Just, like, refill my drink mm. every, like, 48 minutes. Yes, like, yes. We'll be good. Okay. So, uh, in fact, large pterosaurs like the aforementioned Quetzalcoatlus mm. were terrifying predators. Able to pluck small dinosaurs off the ground and scavenge off the carcasses of larger ones. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's so terrifying, actually. Yeah. That's that's so concerning. Why? They're not around anymore. <laughs> I, well, okay, that's fair. But, like, I was thinking, like, oh, like, it's like a flamingo. So it's got, like, this, like, Well, not th this and... one is. Right. Not Quetzalcoatlus, which is not the one we're talking about today, so. Wait. We're talking, about, we're talking yeah. about Pterodostro. That's the eight-foot one. Yeah, but you just said it was still eating small animals. That was Quetzalcoatlus I was talking about. Just was, kidding. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> but so how about, this is when I'm going to transition seamlessly into Pterodostro, <gasps> but how about one that fed like a flamingo? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, now now we're back. Now okay. we're back. Uh, um, to the point that it might have actually been pink. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Enter Pterodostro, a creature that has thick bristle-like teeth from its lower jaw, unlike any other pterosaur. Huh. This jaw was used to strain shrimp like crustaceans, plankton, algae, and really small fish. Uh, kind of like a whale, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like it baleen. just kind of like opens its mouth. Yeah, and... just like filter feeding, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. So like mm -hmm. them and then like... The good place, right? Those yes. have like popularized eating a ton of shrimp. Uh, I haven't seen the good place. I need to see the good place. What? It's, it's so good. Uh, but it's, it's about death, and I'm 30, and so I think about death a lot because I'm so close to it. Right. right, right. <laughs> well, you are over the hill. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to break it to your friends. Yeah, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, yeah. I well, mean, you've got what? Three, four years left. Yeah. You know that that <laughs> horror movie Countdown? Have you heard of Countdown? <laughs> Maybe it's a it's a movie that came out a couple of years ago. I've heard it's really bad, but it has a very intriguing premise. It's about an mm. app that you download that tells you uh, it's a countdown of when you're going to die down to the second. Oh, shit. and it is supernatural, so it is always accurate. Oh, so great. What That's... if I looked at that thing and said, "You got three years left"? I'm like, well, Velociraptor noise. <laughs> 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 I mean, honestly, like, I feel like I would look at that and it would be like, you have, like, 15 years left. And I'd be like, really? I have 15? That's so much longer than I expected. <laughs> uh, all right, so where was I? Okay, so. So, okay, so it, like, filter feeds. Yes, it filter feeds. Like flamingos also have a long neck and torso. Mm. And paleontologist Robert Backer suggested that it might have even been pink like a flamingo due to feeding on a similar diet. So that'd be cool. I like Robert Backer. He wrote one of my favorite books, Raptor Red. Um, hmm. It's like kind of a fiction, but t that's like super accurate about a raptor that like just lives hmm. and and like she she has sort of thoughts, but it's like sniff. That's my kind, but nothing really more than that. So oh, okay, so like very rudimentary. Yeah, like slightly anthropomorphized, but overall they're just animals. And I don't know. Like that sounds like almost basic. Like. Pigs are supposed to have the same intelligence level as like a three year old. Right, right? yeah, yeah. And like three year olds like have a decent grasp onto like, okay, like this is my toy, that is like my mom, yeah. that is a different person. Well, I have is... a one year old. Well, I don't have a one year old, I'm not a father. <laughs> my sister has a one year old. This is uh, going to be a very big reveal here. Guys, I'm a dad! <laughs> <laughs> he just found a child and took Yeah, because I'm still single, but <laughs> I just found this child off the street. Or no, in the river, Moses style. <laughs> Moses style. Right, the river. Where the dinosaur was. Yes. Feeding off of the shrimp. Yes, yes. Pterodostro pushed the child to me in the basket like this. We bestow this upon you. So this was the other thing. Admittedly, I was looking at the wrong prehistoric creature, I realize now. Yes. I feel like it looks a little bit less like a flamingo to me and a little more like that like classic like pelican. Uh, like the, uh, or what's the bird that brought the babies? Oh, the stork. The stork. Yes. Thank you. I got a real stork vibe from Yeah, no, it. This is, these are pretty stork-like. Which, like, always reminds me, have you seen the, like, uh, political cartoon from, like, the 19, like early 1900s? That's yeah. the woman in the, like, proper attire or whatever, and the stork is coming with a baby, and she's, like, beating it off with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, uh, anyways. Old-fashioned birth control. 
Uh, so, anyways, I like <laughs> uh, I, I like Robert Backer. Uh, like he wrote my favorite books, but plus he's also the rival, the main arch enemy of this show, Jack Horner. Mm. Uh, have you heard me talk about Jack Horner on this show? Not even a little bit. Oh god, uh, you call yourself a listener now? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm a listener. I just also have no long term memory. Yeah, Jack Horner. And so the enemy of the enemy is my friend. So welcome to the Cool Kids Club, Mister Backer. Hey. <laughs> You are welcome on this podcast anytime. Yeah, Jack Horner, I guess you're welcome too. Like, I, I like, you're fine, you seem nice, but boy, your theories suck. <laughs> like, and he likes to make controversy. You know the whole thing of, like, T-Rex being a scavenger, that whole theory? Oh, yeah. That was Jack Horner and Jack Horner alone. <laughs> oh. Uh, there was no evidence really for it, but he really pushed that idea. So he's, like, the fake news of the, like... What he tries to do is, like, he doesn't want science to remain stagnant. So what he does is he, like, throws out ideas for it to, like, kind of keep it going. and like. Oh, interesting. Which I kind of get. Yeah. And, and there is some basis behind some of them, but he's very stubborn about, like, no, this is what it is. And right. So, hmm. anyways... Uh, as well as being flam like flamingos, Pterodostero was similar to geese and swans in that due to its long neck and short legs, it needed frantic and low angle takeoffs to achieve lift. Huh. I know this is the wrong creature, but you say long neck and short legs, I always think of, I have a big head and small arms. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, the, from, yes. <laughs> well, that came out a lot in the 100th episode of... Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic mm -hmm. moment in yeah. cinema. Yeah. <laughs> One of the defining <laughs> moments. Rose, bud. Uh, <laughs> frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Right, right. I uh, have big head and little nobody's arms. Nobody's perfect. I have a big head and little arms. That'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a big head and little arms. <laughs> I mean, it's right up there. Great cinema. Yeah. Great cinema. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Also, you know what? Here's an interesting thing about pterosaurs uh, mm. that most people do not know in terms of like takeoffs. Uh, the unique pterosaurs are unique in that they took off quadrupedally, using mm. all four legs. Oh, oh God, that's kind of terrifying. Yeah, to see something like that, like running on all four legs and then like going Just up into the jumping oh, all at one. Because no. like pterosaurs, they, you know, a lot of people imagine pterosaurs as two legged, like as kind of like birds. You know, you yeah. see you see them often like in old cartoons, like standing upright with their wings up. No, yeah, yeah. no, no, like their wings and legs were connected. Like they they had a they had, like they used the forelimbs mainly oh. to flap them, but the flap of skin went all the way down to the knees. So oh weird. So, so it's... uh. Yeah, so, and then when it walked, it walked on all fours. Kind of like a bat. Have you ever seen bats walk, you know? It, it, no, and I have they a crawl. sneaking suspicion that I'm going to be very terrified yeah, to they, see they, a they bat don't, They don't crawling. stand up on two legs like a bird. They crawl, so, and this is kind of huh. like that, so. Okay, but, like, so, little peek behind the curtain, we are uh, recording this on October 1st, which oh, is the that's start true. of spooky season. And this might come out not too long from now, because this is, I think, episode 104, I think. So. Oh, shoot. So... Yeah, because, like, that's why I want to record you pretty quickly, because I'm like, I need this pretty quick. <laughs> quickly. So. Sure. so it might still not, it might be. And he needs at least three days to edit out all these tangents anyway. Yeah, oh, three days of solid editing. Okay, so this will be October 19th is when this comes out. Oh, shoot. So. Hello, future Laura. Yes. Not too far in the future, though. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, no, so, yeah, this is spooky season, so. It's spooky season. So, like, imagine, if you will. Yes. A haunted house. That's dinosaur themed. Doesn't sound very haunted. It sounds great. That sounds terrifying if you do it right. I think this could be very scary. Like Jurassic Park, but like. Well, see, that's the thing. A I've, little less campy. Maybe. I've asked you this several times on the show, and I'm right. assuming the answer is still the same. Right. You have not seen the last Jurassic World no, movie. Not even a little no, bit. no, no. So, the last. <laughs> like, I've told you a bit about different bits about that movie throughout the show. Eventually, I'm going to tell you so much that you will basically have seen the movie already. Exactly. I mean, that's my goal, actually. <laughs> so, I'll never actually have to watch the movie. The, la can... the last third of the movie is basically a haunted house, but with dinosaurs. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, I mean, it sounds like. Those producers copied yeah. my idea. Yes, they went. They saw, heard this episode. Went right. back in time. Right, time travel's probably a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think all those dinosaurs come from? For they did the movies. They, yeah. Yeah. Birds aren't real, guys. We've covered this before. Yeah. So really, all the birds we have are just the dinosaurs that came through the time travel portal. Like. I mean, 
80% of that sentence is correct. <laughs> you lost me after the time travel portal. <laughs> but <laughs> birds are just dinosaurs, yes. <laughs> Honestly, 80% of any sentence I say being correct is pretty good for me. Like... That sentence was 100% correct. <laughs> so... Uh, so basically this thing, Pterodoster, was a, like a mix between a flamingo, a goose, a swan, and a reptile, but more reptile than the other three things. <laughs> Convergent oh evolution God. at work, baby. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yep, Love anyways. It. Anyways, also Pterodoster was in that rare group club of prehistoric critters where we found not only eggs, mm. but fossilized embryos within the eggs. Oh, wild. <sighs> yeah, something that requires the eggs to die without being eaten or destroyed by natural causes. That's got to be incredibly rare. Yeah, perhaps it fell into a lake and drowned like the eggs did. Oh. Uh, so maybe a pterodoster was too busy eating shrimp in, in the wetlands and getting pink and not realizing it was laying a bunch of eggs behind it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, who hasn't been there, uh, right? They, they plopped into the water like pellets of poop and died, and then boom, fossils. <laughs> and then boom, fossils. And you know what? What's responsibility? Well, actually, no, that wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be enough time for the yolk to develop into an embryo, but that's the only problem with that theory. Ah. <laughs> uh. I mean, it sounds still pretty legit to me, so... Yeah. Anyway, so this is the pink pterodactyl, pterodostro, like a flamingo. Let's rate it 1 out of 65 million. Mm, I rate it, uh, I'm going to say, one Jeremy Baramy of giant flying shrimp. I do not know the reference, and we don't have time to <laughs> find... The good place. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to rate it... God, your ratings always throw me off. I always just feel so bad. Like, for consistency's sake, I want to keep saying, you know, I'll rate it this million. But then I'm just like, but I want to do a wacky rating. So I have to do two I, ratings. I, that's fair. This okay, is so fair. My normal rating, uh, let's know, like 25 billion. I mean, it's cool. I got I mean, okay, okay actually, it's maybe not bad. Maybe 30 million. You know, it's the fact that it's a pink pterosaur, that's pretty distinctive, you know? Right. It's yeah. pink, and, like, you don't think of dinosaurs being pink. Yeah. Well, maybe, uh,. The Flintstones. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, okay, my wacky rating, I'm going to rate it uh, that one segment from Fantasia 2000 about the flamingo with the yo-yo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's a pterodost I'm going to rate it one pterodostro with a yo-yo. <laughs> one pterodostro with a yo-yo. I, I mean, mean, Fantasia, not that Fantasia, but Fantasia does have a segment just on dinosaurs. So, well, not just on dinosaurs, about prehistory. Um, hmm. You remember that? No. Uh, I'm going to cover that for the Patreon at some point. <laughs> one of these days, I will also subscribe to your Patreon. Eh, you know, money's tight, you know. <laughs> eh. Uh man. All right, so that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at MattD at MatthewDonCreator.com for your general questions to either co-host. You can follow me on social media at MatthewDonCreator on Facebook, MatthewDon64 on Twitter, and MatthewDon64 on Instagram. Uh, you can follow, like, uh, or I guess you could, like, you, you use that email to get a hold of any of the hosts of the show. Yeah. Um, some people here like to give off their Instagram. I don't know if you care. Sure, yeah, yeah I guess. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it's at Thespian Laura. Yes, you're such a good thespian. Ah, thank you, thank you. As I have not actually worked on a theater production in like. Hey, you have a damn good excuse. This have you seen true. the world? <laughs> this is very true. I it is. Didn't you do a production or like were part of a production that was like masks though? I did. Uh, I helped out for two weekends on a production oh, well, that's that was still, still social something. distancing friendly. Yeah. Still, I mean, it's been. Before, obviously, the world exploded. <laughs> the longest I had gone without a show in my life was, like, six months. Yeah. Well, I remember, I think it was, like... Maybe four. February of 2020, I saw your Scottsboro Boys, yeah. Boys thing. That was, like, just before the pandemic. <laughs> the Scottsboro Boys, yeah, we lost our, like, last weekend of performances, yeah. and everybody was like, we're going to bring it back and, like... A month and a half. Once this and all then blows over. Once this all blows over. And... <laughs> yeah. Go support live theater, folks. <laughs> yes, indeed. And man, a few months later, that show was more relevant than ever. Seriously. <laughs> so. DCPA, are you listening? Like... Yeah. A cab. Anyway, so. <laughs> I can be political on this show. <laughs> I mean, it's your show, so like, hey, ACAB. Yeah, yeah, yeah anyways. To, I have a the book show. series on Amazon, Megazoic, available for print and Kindle. There is no Pterodoster in it, or cops. Lame. Oh, but good. There are no, there are, yeah, well, there are, like, soldiers, and military, and other stuff. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Military can be used all right. It was all right during World War II, <laughs> when we actually had an enemy to fight. That's true. <laughs> so, rather than just, you know, fighting for oil or, you know, pro war profiteering. Pol politics, guys! <laughs> 
<laughs> on your dinosaur. I bring out the worst of this podcast. <laughs> uh, no, no, you and Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> the whole podcast would explode and the studio would set on fire if I had the two of you and me together. <laughs> Hear me out. Yeah. We have the two of us and you, and we record an episode, but we all have alcohol as well. Oh, that sounds like a Patreon exclusive waiting to happen. <laughs> If you want to see it, let us know. <laughs> All right. So, I also have another podcast called The Rit Wit, where two twigs talk about writing. Uh, it's all right. I'm recording it's more a of fun that. One. I'm recording more of that tomorrow. <laughs> all right. I'll answer for this week and say the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. I'm just mentioning filter feed. Like... <laughs> Anyways, bye. <laughs> <laughs>